All right, everyone, it's time for another Torah law study. So let's see what the Bible says about being mean to Joe Biden. And I want you all to know that this isn't the pot calling the kettle black. I'm not being a hypocrite. I am just as guilty of this as anyone else. Um, I'm just bringing this up so that we can know it and try to be better moving forward. Most believers have been critics of the JB administration, myself included. So let's see what the Bible says about being a critic of your ruler. Exodus 22, you shall not revile God nor curse a ruler of your people. And this is very much a New Testament concept as well. Acts 23, and Paul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was a high priest, for it is written, you shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. This is Paul obviously quoting what we just read in Exodus. So stuff like this should prove to you that Paul doesn't think the laws were nailed to the cross. But I have plenty of other videos about that subject. Ecclesiastes 10, even in your thoughts, do not curse the king, nor in your bedroom curse the rich, for the birds of the air will carry your voice or some winged creature tell the matter. 1 Peter 2, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Scripture doesn't say that we should only honor our kings and emperors if they're good ones. Because you see, God appoints all rulers, good or bad. Exodus chapter 9, when God was speaking through Moses to Pharaoh, he said, But for this purpose I have raised you up to show you my power, so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. The Most High is the one who appointed the Pharaoh. And I think we can all probably assume from Scripture that he wasn't the best dude. But our Father in Heaven had a purpose for putting him in place. Even if we can't see what that purpose is, there's definitely a purpose. Romans 13, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Psalm 22, for kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. And even when those nations tax us to death, what does Jesus say? Matthew 22, and Jesus said, show me the coin for the tax, and they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, whose likeness and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. If you're really a believer, it doesn't matter what country you were born in. This is not your home. Whether you believe it or not, we are in exile. We are captives in a foreign land. And while the Most High has sent us into dispersion, we're supposed to be good citizens in those countries. 1 Peter 1, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile. And we see numerous examples of this in scripture. Joseph was in the land of Egypt in exile for many decades. And he conducted himself well in these countries, so well that they placed him second in command of all Egypt. Same thing with the prophet Daniel. Daniel conducted himself in such a godly way that he was made chief priest of all the wise men in captivity. The only time Daniel went against the ruling authorities was when they made it a law that he could not serve his father in heaven. If those governing authorities tell us not to obey the laws of the Most High, or that we can't worship the Most High, then that's a different story. But Daniel still didn't become a bad citizen. He didn't go out rioting in the streets. He continued to serve the Most High, and they arrested him for it. He didn't fight back. He didn't become a terrible citizen. He did the same thing that he was doing from day one, being a good citizen, while still serving the Most High. And I believe that that's what we should do, no matter if our rulers are good or bad. And we know that all governments, doesn't matter what country you live in, are corrupt. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the governments are a bad thing. In most places in the world, if it wasn't for the government, lawlessness would just be rampant. It would be the Wild West. People would be killing each other on the streets. Police officers are good. Laws are good. Accountability is good. 
Back to Romans 13. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you not fear the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. We are supposed to be good, law-abiding citizens that conduct ourselves in a godly way in the light of our Messiah, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach. We aren't supposed to be the ones riding in the streets. We aren't supposed to be the ones cursing our rulers. We're not supposed to be the ones that grumble about how much we're taxed. We are supposed to be the ones that serve the Most High in the light and in the footsteps of Yeshua. And again, I'm guilty of this just as much as any of you. We need to be better moving forward in the time of our captivity.